Hi, and welcome to our introduction to Sims Cloud. Over the course of the next few minutes, I hope to show you some of the basics of our Sims Cloud application and help you get started using it. Let's start by basic navigation of our Sims map. What you see in front of you is Guardian Angel Cemetery, which is what we're using as our demo cemetery today. We can navigate around the cemetery in a number of different ways. Since I have a mouse that has a wheel on it, I can simply move the wheel up and down to move in or out of my map. As I zoom in, more information appears on my map, including burial shapes, markers, names, and various colors. I can zoom out by simply rolling the ball down and moving further away or zooming out of my cemetery. If I had a touchscreen device, such as an iPad or a tablet, I could pinch to zoom, either zooming in or pinch to zoom to zoom out of my cemetery. To move around the map, I can simply click my mouse, hold down the map, and move it to wherever I want to. Again, on a touchscreen device, all I would need to do is take my finger and swipe the map in any direction. If you're not on a touchscreen device and don't have access to a mouse, we also have a zoom in and zoom out button in the upper corner. Simply pushing the plus or minus sign is going to allow you to get closer or further away from the graves of your cemetery. At any point, if we want to reset our Sims map to show the entire cemetery, we can simply push this home button, which again is going to reset and show the entire cemetery. <laughs> Looking at the user interface in front of us, Sims Cloud utilizes two different flyouts. We have a left flyout menu, which contains a list menu and a search menu. From the list menu, we have the ability to simply click on any cemetery, block, lot, and space in our cemetery, and the program automatically zooms us to the one we want. In this case, I selected block A, lot 2, space A, and up in front of me came not only the, the burial shape on our map, but our right flyout menu opened, showing me all the information about the ownership of this grave. From the right flyout menu, I can see ownership information, I can see burial, marker, deed, vault, and permissions. We'll come back to the right flyout menu here in just a second, but I want to make sure I finish the left one. The other option on the left flyout is our search screen. Searching in Sims Cloud is extremely easy because all searching is done right here from the flyout menu. I can search spaces, burials, markers, deeds, permissions, work orders, and ownership history, all from here. So in this case, I'm going to change my option to searching burials and I'm going to do a search for last name of Moore. I type in Moore and I hit the search option down here. And op up comes a window that shows me that there are 11 different people in our cemetery with the last name of Moore. I simply click on the one I'm interested in. And again, my Sims map is going to move so that I see that record right here in the middle of the screen. And then my right flyout menu is going to open and show me all the burial information associated with Edward Moore. If at any point you want to get rid of either flyout menu, simply click the in arrow and they will nicely slide off to the side. To bring them back, click on them again and they'll pop back out. From the main flyout menus, we have the ability to change ownership status of a grave, to place burials, markers, issue deeds, add vaults, or assign grave permissions. As an example, what I'd like to do is First, I'd like to come to my search menu, and I'd like to search for a grave that's available. So I click search. I get a whole list of graves that are available. I'm going to just simply choose one at random here. Here's a grave, and you'll notice on the right flyout, my ownership screen says that it's available. So I start by changing this to sold. I can type in the last name of the person that I want to own the grave. I can type in the last name of a co-owner. If I had a sold date, I can put in a sold date, a cost for the grave, and then any other miscellaneous information that I'm interested in. When I click update, the program is going to ask what do I want to update. In this case, we'll just update the current space. Are we sure we want to do this? Yes. The next time my map refreshes, you can see that that space has now turned a turquoise color. And if I look down at my legend, you can see that the turquoise blue means that the grave is now sold. Since the grave is now sold, I have the option of adding a burial. When I go to the burials tab, it nicely says there are no burials on this space, but I have a big green button where I can click add burial, 
and a window is going to pop up allowing me to place a new burial shape inside of this space. First thing I can do is choose a shape and a size. In this case I'm just going to do a smaller square shape, rotate my angle just a little bit. When I'm happy with what the polygon looks like on my map, I click Next, and I'm presented with a place where I can fill out all the information about the burial. I could say that this is a cremation with a burial date of today, and then the interred name. Anywhere in Sims Cloud that a name field is required or a person's name is required, we always start by typing in the last name of the person and we get a list of all of the customers that are currently in the database that have the beginning part of that name. If the person we want doesn't exist, we simply click Add New and have the ability to fill out a brand new customer in, uh, record. In this case, I'm going to bury Brandon Finley. I can continue to fill out other fields in here, but for time's sake, I'll just talk about them. I can fill out customer um, contact information. I can mark this person as being deceased, which allows me to put in a death date and a death place. I can do birth dates, married dates. If he was a veteran, I could click veteran and I would be allowed to put in war information, branch of service information, so on and so forth. I can also assign him a customer type and then some various checkboxes including whether or not this is a resident of the city or a member of the parish depending on the type of cemetery. When I'm happy I can click submit and the program will tell us that that customer record was saved and then again I start from the top of this window and I continue to work the way down. Um, I'll choose a, a relationship type, I'll choose a funeral home, a vault type, a vault vendor, and then if I had any miscellaneous remarks, I can put them here. Again, when I'm happy with all the information that I've put in, I can click Save. And the next time my map refreshes, which I'll force it to do automatically here, you can see that it's put a little gray box in the middle of here, and it's labeled at Brandon Finley. Let me get in closer so you can see this. There we go. So you can see we now have a, a square on our grave that says Brandon Finley, and on our right flyout menu is all the information associated with the burial Brandon Finley. Again, I can come to the markers tab and I can do the exact same thing. Placing a marker is the same process as placing a burial. I can issue a deed for this space. All I do is just simply start typing in some of the information here, such as, well, maybe well, this was an at need. Um, we'll put in yesterday's date as the deed date. Tell the program that the, this grave cost $450. Give it a deed number and then um, create this deed. When I do that, the program asks me which spaces is this deed for, and I'll say it's just for the current one. That will then allow us to print off a deed that I can print out and sign the bottom of and um, have that as a, a, a legal document. Vaults and permissions are very self-explanatory as well. I come to the permissions tab if I wanted to add a secondary permission to this grave. Maybe, maybe in my cemetery I allow two burials, so since Brandon's already buried here, um, I could still add a second permission, in which case I would come in here and I would select, a, I would try to find the person associated with it, in which case I'll choose my own customer record, and I'll say that I'm going to update the grave with me. So now when I've done that, you can see that the program says Curtis Paul also has the ability to be permission or has the permission to be buried in this grave as well if, if that need would ever arise. I'm going to move the two flyouts out of the way here for just a second and talk about the black bar on the top. The black bar on the top has most of the common uh, menu items that you would need for Sims Cloud. From the cemetery, we have a little drop down menu and we can edit cemetery information or we can manage users. So if you had multiple licenses of Sims Cloud, this is where we would manage those other licenses. Map would just bring us to, if we click the map, it would just bring us back to the map if we weren't currently on it. Map features, we can add a new map feature such as adding a tree or a water line um, or a fire hydrant, things along those lines to our Sims map from right here. Under the utilities menu, we can view disinterred burials, we can see all of our cemetery reports, and we can even download a copy of our cemetery data for our own archival purposes. 
Underneath that is our constants maintenance. These are the items that are in the drop down list, such as burial types, funeral homes, restricted types, so on and so forth. The next button is the reserve spaces menu. Clicking the reserve spaces menu brings up a window that shows us all of the graves that are reserved in our cemetery. Um, continuing on, we have a work orders menu. We can add a new work order or we can do some work order reports. We can view a customers list by clicking this customers window. This brings us, or the, the customers button, sorry. This brings us to the customers management screen. And from here, we can search various different things. So for example, if I search by the last name of Paul, you're actually gonna see I'm gonna get a variety of responses back. Um, in my results, I can see that not only do I get anybody with the last name of Paul, but also Paul Sin, Paul Letty, um, Capal. It, the program is going to be very friendly here and, and try to find as many records as possible that contain Paul in the last name. If I wanted to filter these records, I could then start to type, um, here, I'll do, I'll do my own record. I could then start to type Curtis, and you can see I'm in here a few times because I've done a few different demos with this cemetery. Um, but as you can see on the left hand side is where we do a general search and then up here on the top on the right we filter those results to find the one we want. When, once we find the one that we're looking for we can click on it and you can see that in here is all the customer information and anything we edited in here would automatically affect any graves that this record is linked to. So for example if this, if this customer record for Curtis Paul owned a few different graves in the cemetery and was buried and had permission to be buried somewhere. Any changes we make here are going to affect anything that he's linked to. So something to keep in mind. When we're, when we're done with these screens, I can click the customers button here to go back to the main customers menu, or I can click this map to be brought back to the main Sims map. One last thing I wanted to show you was sometimes it's helpful to work in Sims, especially if you're entering a, a lot of data, it's helpful to work in Sims Cloud without the map. And the way that we do that is by coming to our right flyout menu and clicking this expand button. And when we click the expand button, you're going to see what happens here is our map completely disappears and now we have our list in our search box as well as ownership, burial, marker, deeds vaults, permissions, so on and so forth. So what I can do from here is I can come to the list and I can say I want to be in block A, maybe lot four, space A. So this one already has a burial. Yeah, I can sell that because the status is sold with burial. Um, and I can see markers that are on this. I can see all of the relevant information associated with this. Or I can come in here and I can say I want to search just an available grave. So I'm going to uncheck all of these other options and hit search. Um, up comes a list of all the graves in our cemetery that are available. Go ahead and click on one. And from here, again, I can work in Sims without interacting with the map. I can choose my own customer record. I can do a sold date, do a cost, and I can update this information. And again, update just the current space. I can come to burials and I can add a burial. Now the program's still going to make us place a burial shape since that's a very fundamental aspect of Sims Cloud. Even though we're not interacting with the map in, in real time, we still do need to place this shape. I'll just leave the default shape that is put on there and click burial data. And again, start from the top of this window and work my way down. So I'll say this was an adult um, buried today. This time I can, I'll just choose a customer or choose somebody at random. And this is the only information that's required in Sims. So I'm going to jump over the rest of these and just click save. You can see the information now instantly appears in front of me. And the next time I go back to my map, I will be able to view that information on the map. But for, as I said, for those of you who are doing data entry, you know, going back and, and updating records from the last few years or, or maybe even longer, this could potentially be a faster way to be able to add ownership burial marker depending on how your records are laid out. I'm going to click back to the map here as I wrap it up. Hopefully you'll find that Sims Cloud is an easy to navigate um, at web application. But if you ever have any questions, don't hesitate to call the Sims Tech Support line, 1-800-332-7532. Um, Thank you and have a great day.